I want to introduce you to a really simple node structure that's going to help generate consistency throughout your color grading workflow. This basic framework is going to take a lot of the guesswork out of your color grading process as you have a step-by-step -step process to follow throughout the nodes. Let's take a look at some footage in Resolve. All right, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve and we're already in the color tab. Now, if you don't know where to find the color tab, scroll along the bottom of your window until you see this little color palette here and then click that icon. That will bring you into the color tab. Here I've already set up the seven fundamental nodes that you're going to need in order to generate consistency in your color grading workflow. First things first, let's take a look at how to add nodes. So I'm going to start by deleting what I've already set up here. And in order to add a node, you hit Alt S or Option S. And if you want to add a node before that, it's going to be Shift S to add a node before it. So let's go back to our already set up node structure. As you can see, these are our seven fundamental nodes and I'm going to start by switching them off. How I do that is to select them all and then hit Alt D. That's going to disable all of the nodes. Now obviously your project doesn't already have this node structure set up. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit Alt S seven times and you're going to add seven nodes. And in order to label them, you're going to right click and you're going to hit node label. So the very first node is for noise reduction, the next is exposure, and then white balance, saturation, HSL or your color adjustments, your LUT or your color space transform, and then your black points. Now once you've added and labeled all seven of your nodes, you can start with your color grading process. If you ever want to enable or disable a node, you can simply click on the node number like this and it'll enable or disable it. So the very first node I like to work on is my LUT or my color space transform node. And the reason being, as you can see, I'm working with some really flat Sony S-Log3 footage. And so in order to reintroduce some contrast and color information, we're going to add a LUT or a color space transform. Now for this footage, I'm using a custom variation of the Phantom LUTs. If you're wondering where to find your LUTs, you can simply right click on the node, scroll down to LUTs, and DaVinci Resolve has a whole bunch of built-in LUTs that you're able to use. Now another place to find your LUTs is simply to scroll to the top left hand corner here and you have a whole selection of LUTs that you can apply to your footage. I also mentioned something called a color space transform. So you can find this under your effects tab and then it's right over here called color space transform. You can drag and drop it onto your footage. Now for example sake I'm going to do that right over here. I'm going to disable that. I'm pressing in the scroll wheel on my mouse in order to navigate around my node tree and here I'm going to add an additional node to demonstrate the color space transform. So I'm going to drag the color space transform and then you've got to consider your input color space. So as I said, I'm using S-Log3 footage, which is shot in a Sony S-Gamma3 Cine. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find my Sony S-Log3 input gamma. And then my output color space, I'm going to set to Rec 709 and my output gamma, I'm going to set to Rec 709A as I'm using an Apple computer and this ensures correct color reproduction when I'm exporting my footage. Now if the footage came from a different camera, you would simply select the corresponding input color space and input gamma. So if you were using, let's say, a red camera or a black magic camera or a Canon camera, you would just come along and you would select all of the appropriate information in your color space and your input gamma in order to convert the footage so that you're not working with just a flat looking image, but you already have some contrast and color information to use as a foundation for your footage. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this LUT. I'm gonna hide the effect panel here, and I'm just gonna go and re-enable this LUT. After adding my LUT or my color space transform, the next node I like to work in is my exposure node. So I'm gonna reactivate it here so you can see the changes that I've made. Now the changes that I'm affecting are under my shadows tab, which is here in my primary log wheels. So shadows and my highlights. And then I also make some adjustments within my curve structure. So now these are the adjustments that I've settled on to get my image looking the way that I like it. Now you can always play with your shadows and you can play with your highlights until you get to a point where you're happy with the balance of your shadows and highlights. So uh, if you feel like the image is too dark or too shadowy, you can bring your shadows up. If it's too bright or there's too many highlights, you can bring that level down. And then I use my tone curve in order to introduce some contrast into my image, getting it to look the way that I really want it to. The next node that I'm gonna work on is gonna be my white balance. I'm gonna come and reactivate this node over here. And the most simple way to adjust your white balance is using these temperature and tint sliders. So if we come into our white balance node, you can see I've made this image a little bit cooler and a little bit more magenta. And a nice tool to use here is your vector scope. So you can find your vector scope in this drop down menu here. And what you want to do is you want to activate your skin tone indicator line by coming into these settings and you're just going to enable this show skin tone indicator. 
if your vector scope is very faint, you can increase the amount of information that it's representing over there until a level that you're comfortable with. So as I hover over this, I can see that my skin tone is sitting quite near that skin tone line over here. However, if I'm wanting to make some more adjustments, there are a couple of ways that I can do it. If I wanted to introduce more magenta to shift that line across, I can do so like this. That line gets shifted across and you can see my skin is sitting closer on that skin tone line. The next thing that I could do is I could actually adjust my hues and so I can rotate. You can see how on the vector scope the colors are rotating and that's probably bringing it more in line with the center there. So as you can see, our skin tones are now sitting perfectly on that skin tone line. Now the next thing I like to do is I like to introduce saturation. So as you can see, the image becomes more saturated and that's also represented on this vector scope. Now after doing that, let's enable and disable it again. Now the way that I like to introduce saturation is not through the saturation slider in the primaries wheels, However, I right click on my saturation node, I go to color space and I select HSV and then I right click again and then I'm going to come into channels and I'm going to disable channel 1 and I'm going to disable channel 3 so we're only working on channel 2. And what channel 2 is, if you look at this, HSV, it's the S channel, it's the saturation channel. And now in order to add that saturation, I'm able to adjust the gain under my color wheels in order to introduce more saturation into my image. And what this does is it allows you to not affect your hue and your luminance values in your image, but only your saturation. And so you're getting a increase purely in saturation and not any other color information throughout your image. The next node that I'm gonna work on is my HSL node or my color adjustment node. And what I've decided to do on this node is some fine color adjustments. And so what I've done is I've pulled my gamma down and you can see that effect taking place on the vector scope as well. The gamma comes down and I'm eliminating a lot of this like orange cast that I'm getting throughout the image. Uh, and I'm bringing a little bit more blue into it and I feel that creates a more well-balanced image and reproduces more accurate skin tones. As you can see, I've also played somewhat with my hue slider in this node and I was probably just dialing in my colors exactly to where I wanted them to sit. Again, I'm gonna hover over and my skin tones are gonna sit nice and clearly on that line. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is our black points. So I'm gonna enable my black points and look at the black area of the image when I do that. It takes away all of these blue color casts. And so what's happening there is let's take a look at our parades. And if your parades aren't very clear, you can come along and increase the signal here under the parade settings. Now what I've done is take a look at these parades. What a parade is, is it's a red, green, and blue representation of what you can see in the image. So as you see, if we hover over the center of the image, uh, we've got our little circle popping up in the center of the image. So on the far right, this is the RGB values of whatever that part of the image is on the far right of the parades. And on the far left, you can see it's the values on the far left. So if you look across here to the bottom of our parades, the reds are much closer to zeros. Now these are the black points of our image. 100 would be pure white, zero would be pure black. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring down the blue and bring down the green in order to balance out the black points of my image. And how I do this is I come into my color wheels, I'm coming into my log wheels, and I'm making adjustments in the shadow region, and the adjustments are only on the green and the blue settings. So when I re-enable this, you can see how my green has been pulled down, my blue has been pulled down. I can pull the blue down a touch more and you can see those adjustments taking place. And then what we do is we get pure blacks in our image the way that they should be and they're not polluted by other colors. So look at the difference that that makes. We're going from a little bit of green and blue introduced into the, the shadow areas of our image. And this just brings our blacks down to a level. Now the final node we're gonna work on is our noise reduction. So if you zoom in over here, you can see the image is quite noisy in the shadows. And I've added some noise reduction in order just to smooth that out a little bit. So what it's done is it's removed a lot of that noise in the shadows and noise reduction is done right over here in the setting over there under motion effects, temporal noise reduction, I've set it to three frames with my motion estimation type is better. And then I've just adjusted it here until the point where I've been happy with the look that I'm getting. Where you make the adjustments in this color grading pipeline can be quite important. So as you can see, we've made all of our exposure, white balance, saturation and color adjustments before our LUT or our color space transform. 
The reason it's done in this way is that once you're applying your LUT or your color spray transform, you're baking in some information into the image that you're going to output. So what you want to do is you're wanting to edit in the areas before that information is baked in so you can have the maximum amount of flexibility when you're making your adjustments. Noise reduction is done right at the start of the pipeline in order to make sure that all of the adjustments done after the noise reduction are working on the cleanest possible image. The reason that you're doing your black point right at the end is because you've now done all of your color adjustments throughout the image and you're settling the colors to make sure that everything looks clean. So there you have it, a really basic color grading node tree that allows you to follow a structure step for step while color grading your footage. Now I'm not saying that this is the be all and end all of node structures, but it is a really good starting point. I want to encourage you to play around and find a node structure that works for you and you can always use this as a base. Let me know in the comments down below how you like to approach your color grading and if you enjoyed this video give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you guys in the next video.